So I was chilling, minding my own damn business. Watching that new Jason Tarantino review about Saints Row 4, as we stand. Also, really good channel. Check him out. Say what's up to him. Get that man to 1K subscribers, please. As I was watching it, something clicked. Nobody talks about how much volition ruined Johnny got. So I wanted to take it upon myself to break down exactly how they fucked this man up. Exhibit A, Johnny's death in St. Row the Third. In St. Row the Third, Gat dies. A fan favorite character that is stuck with us through both the first and the second game, who's framed as an absolute badass. Taking a shotgun to the knee, a samurai sword through the gut, a knife through the same place, survives drive-bys like it's nothing, escaped the death penalty, and survived prison for two years and 31 days, gets killed within the first hour. Now, granted, granted, this wasn't Volition's ultimate decision. It came from the higher ups at THQ who wanted more emotional impact. And if you don't believe me, there's a clip from Saint that has Steve Jarrows explain why they had to cut Gat out. Why did you kill Johnny? Uh, he, like, originally, he wasn't supposed to die. There was a version of the game where he yeah. lived the entire way through. Yeah. And then THQ said they wanted me to kill Johnny. People were like, we needed to have more emotional weight. Like, what did mm. we kill Johnny Gat? Thank you to Saint for providing the footage. Really appreciate it, my guy. Mwah. So, Gat had to be the one that was killed off. Hell, it was even confirmed that he was dead by Philippe Loren, as well as the boss, as well as Shandi. And we even got a zombie homie of Gat along with it. Which, in previous Saint Row games, historically confirmed that our homies were dead. At the time when the game released, people were angry for obvious reasons making theories, or they were waiting for either DLC or Saints Row 4. But before there was even an iota of thought about Saints Row 4, there was the DLC Trouble with Clones. Y'all remember this shit? Y'all remember this big piece of shit? Cloned by some random nerd in his mother's basement, infused with Saints flow? Well, I just made you remember. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth on the Trouble with Clones DLC, considering I do want to do a full review of Saints Row the Third in the future, but... I can somewhat forgive it considering A, it wasn't really Johnny, and B, the DLC is probably not even canon anyways. And even if it was, it all gets erased because Saint Row 4 blew up the earth. But it begs the question, would Gat even fit into this new version of Saint Row? Like, a more nonsensical, immature, and over-the-top parody of itself, like 3 and 4? Probably not. But they sure did try. Which leads us to Exhibit B, Gat returning in Saints Row 4. In Saints Row 4, Gat came back in the most sensible and organically written way possible. By having an alien overlord capture him during his supposed death to basically retcon both Saints Row the Third and parts of Saints Row 2. Let's explore those retcons, shall we? First, let's talk about Gat getting captured. Zinyak captured Gat off of the assumption that Gat could probably solo his ass. And considering how much of a mythos Gat has garnered throughout the series, it kind of makes sense that that Chuck Norris level of mythos would surround him, especially after becoming a celebrity in St. Row the Third. But Zinyak is an intellectual, the smartest among his species, collecting equally as impressive specimens throughout the galaxy. So that brings up two questions. One, if you think Gat could solo you single-handedly, why on earth would you not kill him? Sounds like, uh, sounds like a dumbass decision. And even if you knew that, and you captured him, why would you not want him to turn against the saints? Or like probe his mind or something? Now you got the technology. There's no way y'all don't got the technology, bro. You're an advanced species of aliens. Like, there's no way you would have been able to you wouldn't have, and considering that clones and zombies exist in this universe, there's no way you wouldn't have had the technology to clone a, a, an evil version of Gat to take down the saints or, or turned Gat evil through mind manipulation inside the simulation. So I don't understand why you didn't make that decision, Zinyak. Matter of fact, that actually brings up more questions. Philippe and the boss confirmed in the third game that he died. They had a funeral 
and a zombie homie. So does zombie gap just not exist now because of the retcon? Was he a clone? Who was this man? Who was he? I don't know who this man is. And uh, as for retconning Saints Row 2, there's just like one thing that I noticed. And that's the fact that they showcase Shandi getting rescued by Gat instead of the boss. That's another retcon, which kind of tilted me a little bit because we knew what happened. We remember because we was there too. Like, what, what, what do you mean Gat rescued Shandi? Huh? We did that. I did that. We all did that. We was there. Johnny was basically benched for, well, at this point in Saints Row 4, after we rescued Gat, like, he's basically just benched for the rest of the season until his spin-off game, Gat Outta Hell. Which brings me to Exhibit C, Gat Outta Hell. Now, I'm gonna be upfront. Gat Outta Hell isn't a bad game. It's actually pretty fun in co-op. I liked it, but what I didn't like about it is how much they just flat up, flat out gave up on this man Gat. Just dead ass. <laughs> Remember how I said earlier that Volition tried to make Gat fit the new mold that Saints Row became? Well, they tried to fucking do that shit and it was fucking terrible. The flanderization of the whole character is just cranked up to 11. Here with Johnny doing sing-alongs, musicals, bro, what? Gat, like a lot of the other characters in the series, like the boss and Shandi, changed due to the new circumstances that the Saints keep getting dragged into, degrading the series' ability to be taken seriously. And that's what happens when a copious amounts of studio interference, incompetence, and quench does to a studio that wanted to just make some gangster shit, then evolved into being laughed at with the reboot. And uh, with that said, if we can't trust the publishers and developers to make what we desire, should we just give up on Saints Row as a whole? I don't want to, but to be honest, it's starting to feel like I don't have a choice.